Man, these layovers. Is this our new reality in trucking? Well, let's talk about it a little bit. What are layovers? So usually a layover is when a driver arrives to the delivery and he does not have a reload. He has to wait until the next day to get a reload. Now, when you're doing a delivery at around 3 p.m. or 4 p.m., yeah, okay, whatever, I'll wait until the next day to do my re to get my reload. But what happens if I'm delivering at nine o'clock in the morning and now I have to wait until tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning to get my reload? So just so you guys understand what's happening out there. So for every 10 trucks out there, to Today, there is seven loads. So these 10 units are fighting over these seven loads. And the guys that didn't get a load today, because there's only seven loads for seven trucks. So those three have to lay over for the next day to get a load and then fight for tomorrow's load. So what is happening in the market is that there are less and less loads available for truck drivers out there. Now, the current situation in the market shows that it's not gonna get better anytime soon. Well, right now there's Christmas coming up, so it's becoming a little bit better, the Christmas rush. But come January, man, it is going to be brutal out there. And if you think the freight rates are bad right now, January and February is going to be a whole nother ball game. A lot of people are asking about, is it the dispatcher's fault? So there are dispatchers and there are load bookers, but there's only so much that they can do, right? So how much are you going to decrease your price? Because these freight brokers are brutal. They don't care who they're going to give the load to. They're going to give it to the cheapest carrier out there. Now there's always this one or two carriers that are dying to get home and they're just willing to do it at cost. So if you are looking for a load, and I actually did this test where I wanted to see if I have a truck in Georgia and I wanted to get home to Ohio or Michigan, what would I need to do? And man, it is bad out there. I also did the test with Georgia and Pennsylvania. So why did I do Pennsylvania and why did I do Georgia? Because we are planning on opening up a terminal in Georgia and I just wanted to see what are the lanes, how many loads are there going to Pennsylvania? And man, oh man, is it bad. It is really bad out there. So the amount of loads are not as available as they used to be. What happened six months ago, eight months ago? For every 10 trucks, there was 25 loads. So these brokers would literally be throwing money at these truck drivers, just do my load. And then the driver would say, you know what? $4 a mile, $5 a mile, $6 a mile. They don't care. They didn't care back then what to pay. They just wanted that load move. And today I feel like they're trying to get back at us or the ball is in their court right now where they're dictating the terms. A lot of you are facing a situation where the you get you're getting dispatched or the dispatcher is telling you that they have a load and then 15 20 minutes later or 30 minutes later they get canceled on you so the dispatcher says i'll have a load in the next 10 15 minutes you call back and then the dispatcher says listen i'm so sorry that load got canceled i want you to understand what's happening in the background so i as a dispatcher am calling on a load the load they gave me the load for two thousand dollars let's just say georgia to pennsylvania we'll take that example the broker told me on the line two thousand dollars i agreed with him with the rate he said i'll send you over the confirmation he sends me over the confirmation i'm about to dispatch the driver and then all of a sudden the broker calls me and he cancels the load on me why is he canceling the load on me I'll tell you why because there's another carrier that called that broker and, and asked him how much did, how much did you book the load for he said two thousand dollars he said listen I'll do it for seventeen hundred dollars just send me the load now the broker is faced with the situation do I cancel this load on this carrier and send it for seventeen hundred dollars and make an extra three hundred dollars on top of the three hundred dollars that he already made and the answer to that is yes so that broker will end up canceling the load with you give it to that cheaper carrier for seventeen hundred and then he will dispatch the load to that cheaper carrier now if he's gonna get a call again where somebody is going to do it for $1,500, then he'll cancel the load again on that other carrier and give it to the guy that gave him the rate of $1,500. So that's why you see that there's a lot of cancellations and a lot of things happen, moving parts that are really not the dispatcher's fault. So definitely carriers are undercutting rates. Now, if I have a driver that is in Georgia and I'm trying to get him to California and that driver really needs to go home, now I am faced with two decisions. Number one, either cut my rate or number two, that driver is going to quit on me the second he gets home if he doesn't get a load back. So yes, we are also faced with situations where the freight rates are extremely low, but we're taking those loads because we need to satisfy the drivers also. Another reason why layovers are happening is breakdown and parts. Boy, oh boy, what is happening with parts? So if a truck breaks down, there is absolutely no way that you can get parts to him within 24 hour service anymore. Usually you're waiting for parts for three days, for four days, for five days, depending on what kind of part, there are big 
big, big, big delays with parts and it's causing drivers to lay over to the next day and the day after that, sometimes it's three, four days. Now, when you have a company in California and the truck broke down in Pennsylvania, well, what are you gonna do? Fly the driver back home? Can you convince them to wait a day or two? But it's not really a day or two because those day or two become three, four days. And those three, four days sometimes become four or five days. I mean, have you ever tried to get an appointment at Volvo or Peterbilt in Pennsylvania or in New Jersey? You're waiting sometimes four or five days just for them to look at your truck. Now, after they saw the truck and you got the appointment, now they know that they need the following four or five parts. They'll order those four or five parts and those parts will only come in in four or five days. So that truck is down for about 10 days. So a lot of drivers are, are starting to get, are, are seeing this trend. And when a truck breaks down, they just want to head home. They don't care how they want to get home. And it's like, okay, call me when that truck is going to be ready because I'm not waiting, not for the parts and not for this dealership to, to take in my truck, just to get an understanding of what's wrong with the truck and why it broke down. The same thing is happening not only with trucks, but also trailers. Sometimes the truck is just fine, the trailer, something's wrong with it. And again, it takes time for those parts to come in. So is it your dispatcher's fault? Not always. There's a lot of things that are happening in the background that are starting to affect everybody's daily lives. And these layovers are becoming more and more frequent. Does it make sense to change your job into a different company? So that's a very, very good question. So the contracts that we have here at ET Transport are different than the contracts that other companies have. Sometimes you have better outbound, sometimes you have better inbound, and sometimes you just have drop trailers everywhere and there are no layovers. I would recommend, I mean, in today's world, in today's day, sometimes it's better to take a smaller pay, but you know that a company has terminals all over the place, so you're not gonna get stuck. For those of you that are getting stuck out there or layovers are becoming more and more common, it's a tough situation to be in. It really is a tough situation to be in. Can I make a decision for you on what's better? No, only you can decide on how bad it is for you. Now, if you're not bringing a pay home and if you're not making, you know, your 3,000 miles per week, then that is a problem and you need to decide for yourself whether or not you should be moving companies.